Hi there, this is Penelope. This is a short video on points of inflection. Now, it's not actually in the DE4102 course, but it is useful to know about. I've drawn some diagrams, some graphs in Desmos. Now, the first one is Y, this one is actually Y dash, and this one is Y double dash. So the red one is the cubic, that's the original function. The blue one is the derivative, the first derivative, and the green one is the second derivative. Now let's have a look. The original function has roots at, and you can just read these off from the graph, x equals negative 1.75, 0, and 1, and that's where y is equal to 0, and it has a maximum at x equals negative 1.054, And it has a minimum at x equals negative 0.25. Now let's look at the derivative, the blue curve, which has turned into obviously a quadratic. It has roots at x equals negative 1.054 and 0 0.5. 554. Now this is where y dash is equal to 0. Starting to see the connections I hope. And it has a minimum at negative 0.25. Okay. Whoops, that was a slight error up here. The minimum at x is x is equal to 0 0.554. Okay, carrying on, look, let's look at the second derivative. It's now a straight line, and it has a root at x equals negative 0 0.25, and that's where the second derivative is equal to 0. Now, y and y dash are linked. Because this is how we find where the min or the max are. Then the first derivative and the second derivative are linked. Because that tells us how we decide on whether it's a max or a min. Look at the sign of y da double dash to do this, that if y double dash is positive, then we have a minimum, and if y double dash is negative, then we have a max. So what that implies is that at some stage, y double dash is equal to zero, at some stage, because it must be. Now, look at the graph, look at the green graph, y double dash equals zero at x is equal to negative 0.25. And if we look carefully, or if we check using some x values, say x equals negative 0.3 and x equals negative 0.2, we can find that this is actually where the concavity or the convexivity changes. And we call this a point of inflection. It has to be a little bit more than just where the second derivative is zero, though. We have to have the, the slope changes on either side. Sorry, that the slope doesn't change on either side. So if it was negative, then it remains negative. And you can see here that where x is equal to negative 0.25, up here somewhere, then the slope here is negative before the point, and the slope after the point is negative. So the point of inflection, I'll write this up the top now, the point of inflection is where 
y double dash is zero provided the slope remains negative or positive. Before now, if it's a nice, if it's a nice cubic, then the point of inflection is going to be halfway between the max and the min. If it's a nice function. So in this case, it's going to be halfway between negative 1.054 and 0 0.554. And then add them together, find that actually x is um, negative 0.25, and then find the y value. Now, just doing it without the graph, although perhaps drawing the graph would be a good idea, it looks something like this. Now, if it doesn't have a max and it doesn't have a min, we know that by finding the derivative. And we would need to set that to zero for the max or min. But there isn't one, so there's no real value for x. But that doesn't stop us going on to find the second derivative. So the second derivative means negative 6x plus 2. And if we try to find the point of inflection, we would solve that as equal to 0, so that x was equal to a third. So somewhere in there. And if we use x equals a third, we'd find that y was equal to 20 over 27 by putting that back into there. Or, uh, what's that, about 0.74? But we do need to check, we do need to check, check that the slope is negative before that point. and after and it is in this case you would put that into the slope into the slope function find that it's negative before find that it's negative after